Gene, you're making the move from NASCAR into Formula One. Why? Uh, you know, I think it's part of our business plan to uh, expand our uh, marketing and sales in all of the rest of the world. We have a good domestic market and we use NASCAR for that format. So it's, it's basically uh, just an expansion of that same business model through the rest of the world. So what's the plan then? Are you gonna, you're going to be much more European based to start with where you lean on other people's expertise like Ferrari for example, your partner, and then will you try and do more American uh, involvement as the years go on? Well, I think our first business model is to do what we do in NASCAR is, you know, we run a racing team and our primary purpose is to, is to win races. And uh, so we procure, you know, engines and chassis, uh, you know, from other suppliers. But we do build our own sheet metal, we do our own aero, we do that there. And uh, so it's very, it could be a very similar model, I think, for Formula One. What makes Ferrari the ideal partner <coughs> for, for what you're doing here in Formula One? Well, when we started off, uh, you know, we, uh, uh, you know, Gunther Steiner made inquiries to, you know, various suppliers, and, uh, you know, various suppliers had, you know, various programs. Um, Ferrari seemed to have the the best overall program. They had an interest in what we were doing more so than say other ones, and uh, that relationship uh, just seemed to uh, work best for us. But is there a line for you in the sense that is it important? to Haas, to have some skin in the game from an intellectual property point of view that you are to some extent a constructor, or would you be open-minded about literally just buying a Ferrari and racing it as a Haas? Um, well, you know, right now the rules don't allow that, so that's obviously something we're not going to do, but uh, I think we have to learn, and I think there has to be a re reason for Ferrari to want to help us, and I think maybe this is a maybe a new model where you know the bigger teams why should a bigger team help a smaller team there has to be some uh, you know sympathetic relationship there where one benefits from the other and in most situations right now the way it's written is there's no there's no real benefit for a bigger team to help a smaller team so they don't um, what part have you played if any in the discussions about what formula one might look like from 2017 onwards because obviously there's this plan to kind of reimagine the sport to make the cars more appealing to to make the drivers more heroic in the middle of all that. Have you had input into that process? No, no not really. Uh, I think the, the bigger uh, you know, influence we've had is, is on this uh, nationality uh, rivals of, of basically being an American team now is going to compete with the Germans and the Italians and I think that has a, a much more international uh, interest than say what we do you know as, as a team to the other teams because uh, you know let's face it uh, Formula One is, is an international motorsport. Obviously you, you mentioned that your business model is about using Formula One as a platform for business to business sales as you travel all around the world to expand your machine tools business globally, but what part do you think you'll play in making Formula One more popular in the U.S. during during the years that you're competing? Well, you know, I think an example I mentioned to you earlier was like even the, the, the women's soccer team uh, in the U.S. I didn't even know who that was. They won this soccer event and, and that was front page news and, and cheers, cheers, cheers. So I'm hoping that we can have the same effect in the United States for Formula One is like all of a sudden there's a American Formula One team and 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 uh, you know the the uh, uh, the home team uh, people are going to cheer for us.